All right, so merch. Ever think about bringing your creative vision to life? You know, like slapping it on T-shirts and mugs, maybe even phone cases. Yeah, it's a whole thing. Well, that's exactly what we're diving into today, how to actually make that happen. I'm excited. We've got a whole bunch of videos from YouTubers who've done it. Oh, cool. Built their own merch empires, and they're sharing their secrets. So like blueprints? Exactly. So many people think merch is just about uh, making some extra cash. Yeah, that's what I thought too. Right. But these creators, they're showing us there's so much more to it. Like what? Well, you know that Batty in Business video? Yeah. They talked about Mr. Beast. Oh, yeah. He's huge. And for him, merch isn't just an afterthought. Right. It's like part of his brand. It's core. It's like giving fans a way to where there's support. Yeah, like walking billboards. Exactly. They become part of the brand story. That's And speaking of building a brand, you know, if you're looking to connect with an audience and create a profitable online business, there's this incredible resource I have to tell you about. Oh, really? Yeah, it's BrianGarvin.com. That's Brian with an I. Oh, yeah. He's got this free affiliate guide called 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate. That sounds intense. It is. Over 12,300 words packed with gold. Oh. All about affiliate marketing. Nice. So how do you get it? Super easy. Just go to his website, BrianGarvin.com, pop in your name and email, and click that verification link. Boom, you're in. Sweet. You can find the link in his YouTube bio. Perfect. Okay, back to merch. Okay, yeah. So we're talking about turning fans into brand ambassadors, creating those deep connections. Yeah, yeah. But let's be real for a sec. The logistics can be a little scary. Totally. Like, where do you even start? Right. Like, do you need a warehouse full of boxes? That's a good question. Well, that's where print-on-demand comes in. Print-on-demand? What's that? It's like magic, hustle ninjas, backslash... Mm -hmm. Curtis King TV, they all use this model. I've heard of that. Basically, you create the design, and someone else handles all the printing, the shipping, everything. Oh, so you don't need all that inventory. Exactly. Yeah. No tie-dye shirt mountain situation like Curtis King TV talked about. Oh, my God. Yeah, that story was rough. Right. Print-on-demand takes away all that risk. So that's step one, but then where do you sell this stuff? All right, so you've got your design. You've got your print-on-demand partner. Yeah. Now it's time to choose your storefront. Okay. Think of it like this. Do you want to set up shop in a bustling marketplace or build your own little boutique off the beaten path? Hmm, interesting. Hustle Ninjas and Apparel Success, they break down the options. Okay. You've got Etsy, Amazon, those are like the marketplaces. Lots of people. Tons of traffic, but you pay for it. Yeah, that makes sense. Higher fees, less control of your brand. Right. Then you've got your own website. Some more control. Total control, but you got to drive the traffic yourself. Yeah, that's a trade-off. It is, but it all comes down to what's right for your brand. Makes sense. But regardless of where you sell, the real question is, mm. what makes people actually click that buy button? Good question. What makes good merch? Apparel success. Nailed it. Okay, tell me. They laid out four reasons people buy merch. I'm all ears. Emotion, aesthetic, status, and utility. Hmm, that makes sense. Does it make them feel something? Does it look cool? Does it give them bragging rights? Or does it actually do something useful? Yeah, like those funny t-shirts you see people wearing. Exactly. Like that Canadian-themed clothing they uh, mentioned. Yeah, it's hilarious, right? So funny. But it also taps into that sense of belonging. Like a shared identity. Yeah, exactly. It's like those I Heart NY shirts. Oh, classic. Simple. But they evoke a feeling. Yeah, I get it. So the question is, what's your merch story? What makes it unique? I like that. And how do you translate that into designs that people actually want to wear? Yeah, good question. That's where understanding your audience comes in. So true. What are their passions? What makes them tick? What kind of statement do they want to make? Right, because it's about more than just a logo. It's about crafting a whole experience. Oh, I like that. But before we get too carried away, yeah, there's one important thing we need to talk about. Trademarks. Uh, ooh, legal stuff. Nobody wants a cease and desist letter. No, thank you. Hannah Ebling, she had a great story about this. Oh, yeah. She wanted to use the phrase, life is better at the cabin. Cute. Right. But she did a trademark search first. Oh, Mark. And guess what? What? Someone already owned it. Oh, no. It's so easy to assume something's up for grabs. I know, right? But it can get you into serious trouble. Yeah, that makes sense. Luckily, she walked us through the whole trademark search process. Nice. And it's not as scary as it sounds. Really? You can even do it for free online. That's good to know. And speaking of free and valuable resources, have you checked out BrianGarvin.com? Brian with an I. That's the one. 
his free affiliate guide, 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate. I need to write this down. It's seriously a game changer. Wow. Over 12,300 words of pure affiliate marketing wisdom. I'm sold. Just head over to his YouTube bio for the link. Got it. Okay, so we've dodged the trademark landmines. We've got a sense of what makes merch tick. Yeah. Now let's talk design. What are the secrets to creating designs that people actually want to wear? Okay, that's what I want to know. We'll dive into all of that and more right after the break. Sounds good. I'm ready. Okay, so we've got those trademark searches done. We're good on that front. Sick. And we've got a good sense of what our audience loves, you know, what they're into. Yeah, yeah. So where do we actually start designing? Like for those of us who aren't, you know, Photoshop experts. Right, like I can barely draw a stick figure. Well, Hannah Abeling had some really great tips on that. Oh, awesome. She's so good. She really broke down those print-on-demand design principles. Okay, yeah. You mentioned Canva earlier. I love Canva. It's a lifesaver, for sure. Seriously. But even with the best tools, there are some key things to keep in mind. Like what? Spill the tea. Well, first off, font choice. Oh, yeah. Fonts are important. It seems simple, but it can really make or break a design. Totally. Remember, with print-on-demand, your design has to look good on everything. Right, from a tiny sticker to a giant tote bag. Exactly. A delicate script might look amazing on a mock-up, right. but then you put on a t-shirt and it's just a blurry mess. Oh yeah, you don't want that. So Hannah Ebeling recommended going for bold, clear fonts. Makes sense. Fonts that are legible even at smaller sizes. Got it. Bold and clear. And don't forget about color. Ooh, color is huge. Color psychology is a whole thing. It is. It's so interesting. Certain colors evoke certain emotions and associations. Yeah, like what? Well, Apparel Success gave the example of blue. Okay, blue. Often representing trust and reliability. Oh, that makes sense. While red might be more about excitement and energy. Ooh. So it's worth spending some time thinking about how different colors align with your brand. Yeah, and what you want to convey. Exactly. Okay, so we've got fonts, we've got colors. Check and check. What about graphics? Any hard and fast rules for print on demand? Yeah. Hannah Ebeling had a great tip about this. Okay, I'm listening. Make sure you're using high resolution graphics. Oh, that's a good point. There's nothing worse than having your design all pixelated or blurry when it's printed. Right, it looks so unprofessional. It's like going to a concert and realizing the band's logo on their merch is all fuzzy. Ugh, total buzzkill. Right. So high-resolution graphics are key. Got it. High-res is a must. Now remember those four key reasons people buy merch that Apparel Success talked about? Oh, yeah. Emotion, aesthetic, status, and utility. Right. Keep those in mind as you design. Yeah, that makes sense. For example, if your audience is all about that aesthetic... Okay, so they want something that looks good. Exactly. Make sure your designs are visually striking. And then when you're marketing it... Use high-quality photos and videos. And people can really see how cool the merch is. Exactly. Show it off in the best light possible. And if it's more about emotion and community, yeah, maybe you lean into designs that tell a story. Right, something that resonates on a deeper level. Like that Canadian-themed clothing? It was funny, sure. Hilarious. But it also tapped into that sense of shared identity. That feeling of belonging. Exactly. Okay, we've got the design process down. We're churning out amazing, trademark-safe designs. Yes, uh, Designs that people actually want to wear. That's the goal. Now, how do we get the word out? Marketing time. We've talked social media and in-person events. Yeah. But are there any other marketing strategies we should have in our arsenal? There's one that often gets overlooked, but it's incredibly powerful. Okay, tell me. Email marketing. Email. Really? I know it might seem a little old school. It kind of does. But trust me on this one. Okay. I'm Building an email list is like creating a direct connection with your most loyal fans. I see. You can send them exclusive updates, behind the scenes peaks. Yeah. And of course, special offers on your merch. Ah, so it's about building those relationships. Exactly. Making people feel like they're a part of an exclusive club. I like that. You can even segment your list. Segment? What's that? It means you can divide your email list into different groups. Oh, okay. Based on people's interests or past purchases. So you can send them more targeted emails. Exactly. Personalized recommendations. That's more... Plus, it's a great way to re-engage people who may have bought from you in the past. Oh, yeah. People who maybe forgot about you. Exactly. So it's not just about blasting out generic promotions. Right. It's about being more strategic. It's about nurturing those long-term relationships. I like it. And speaking of building long-term success, have you checked out out briangarvin.com brian with an i that's him 
He's got this amazing free affiliate guide called 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate. It's so good. It's packed with over 12,300 words of actionable insights. Wow. All about how to make a killing in the world of affiliate marketing. Kelly's is right. Just head over to his YouTube bio for the link. It's free. Can't beat that. Okay, so we've got our social media game plan. Check. Our email list is growing. Awesome. Maybe we're even thinking about hitting up some in-person events. Yeah, why not? It's a lot to juggle, but it sounds like the rewards could be huge. They definitely can be. All right, so we've covered design principles, marketing strategies. We're on a roll. What else do we need to know to really level up our merch game? Well, there's one more crucial element we need to talk about. Ooh, what's that? Ethical production. Oh, that's a great point. As consumers become more and more conscious of, you know, the impact of their purchases. Yeah, for sure. We need to make sure we're doing things the right way. Absolutely. It's so important. It's about looking beyond just the bottom line. Right. And considering the social and environmental footprint of our merch. So what does ethical production actually look like in the world of print on demand? Well, it starts with choosing the right partners. Okay, partners. Look for print on demand companies that prioritize fair labor practices, yeah, sustainable materials, uh-huh. and eco-friendly production methods. Right. So how do we know if a company is actually doing all that? That's a good question. It's not like there's an ethical production label on their website. You're right. It takes a bit more digging. So what do we look for? Look for certifications from organizations like Fair Trade. Okay. OOTS, which stands for Global Organic Textile Standard. Got it. And OECOTEX. Okay, I've heard of that one. These certifications verify that a company meets certain ethical and environmental standards. So it's like a stamp of approval. Exactly. It yeah. gives you that extra peace of mind. Okay, so it's about doing our research, asking the right questions, yeah. and making informed choices. Absolutely. And then once you've found those ethical partners, yeah. shout it from the rooftops. Uh-huh. What do you mean? Share your commitment to ethical production with your audience. Oh, I see. Let them know that when they buy your merch, yeah. they're supporting a brand that aligns with their values. That's a powerful message. It is. It's about more than just selling a product. Right. It's about creating a brand that stands for something. Exactly. And that brings us to the final piece of the puzzle. Ooh. You intrigued. Storytelling. Storytelling. How can you make your merch more than just a product? Okay. Hey. But a symbol of something meaningful. That's deep. We'll explore that and more in the final part of our deep dive. Can't wait. Okay, so we're back for the final part of our merch deep dive. We've gone from the why of merch to the how-to of design marketing. Even ethical production, it's been a lot. It has, but there's one more crucial element we need to explore. Ooh. Okay, lay on me. If you want to create merch that truly resonates with your audience, you need to think about storytelling. You mentioned storytelling at the end of the last part. We've been thinking about it ever since. Good. It's about going beyond the product itself right. and tapping into those emotions, those values that your brand represents. Okay, so how do you like weave a narrative into a t-shirt or a coffee mug? Think about those iconic pieces of merch we all know and love. Like what? Band t-shirts sports jerseys, even those I Heart NY shirts, they're more than just pieces of clothing. Oh, I see what you They're mean. symbols of something bigger. Right. They represent something. Exactly. A shared passion, a sense of belonging, a memory, an experience. Great. So I need to get it. And as a creator, you have the power to infuse your merch with that same kind of meaning. So it's about giving it depth. Exactly. What story does your brand tell? What values does it stand for? How can your merch become a vehicle for expressing those things? So it's not just about slapping a cool design on something. Nope. It's about thinking about the message behind it. Exactly. What do you want people to feel when they wear your merch? What conversations do you want to spark? Ooh, I like that. What if your merch became a conversation starter, a way for your fans to express their individuality or show their support for a cause they care about? Right, then it becomes more than just merch. It becomes a statement. And that's when you know you've created something truly special. So it's like taking your brand's mission statement and turning it into something tangible. Yes. Something people can wear and share with the world. I love that. And it all comes back to what we talked about at the beginning. Building that deeper connection with your audience. Exactly. Merch, when done right, isn't just a transaction. It's a way to strengthen that bond, create a community around your brand. It's been amazing unpacking all of this. We've covered so much ground design, marketing, ethical production, storytelling. 
I feel like I have a whole new perspective on merch. Me too. And remember, you don't have to do everything perfectly from the start. Yeah. Just start somewhere. Start small experiment, learn from your mistakes, and most importantly, have fun with it. So true. And for anyone out there who's feeling inspired to dive into the world of merch or even just explore different ways to build their brand online, remember to check out BrianGarvin.com. That's Brian with an I. He's got so much great info. His free affiliate guide, 10 Steps to Becoming a Super Affiliate, is packed with over 12,000 words of actionable advice. It's a game changer for sure. You can find the link in his YouTube bio. Definitely check it out. Well, that brings us to the end of our merch deep dive. It's been a journey. We've explored the ins and outs of designing, selling, and marketing your own merch online. Hopefully you're feeling inspired and ready to take your creative vision to the next level. Remember, building a successful merch business takes time, effort, and a willingness to experiment. So true. Stay curious, stay creative, and most importantly, stay true to your vision. Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> Thanks for joining us on this incredible journey. Until next time, keep diving deep.